Seacom, the first majority African-owned open access undersea fiber optics cable linking southern and east Africa to India and Europe and bringing high-speed international broadband connectivity. Projects of this nature are notorious for encountering delays and failing to deliver on promises, but not the privately funded CECOM, which switched on only a month later than scheduled, interrupted only by pirate activity off the Somali coast. So how did it all happen? An extensive marine survey, including impact assessments, route mapping and pre-engineering work, was done by Tyco Telecommunications and was completed by October 2007. This planning phase was instrumental as timing and logistics were key. In November 2007, Seacom and Tyco started the construction contract. Three ships were deployed simultaneously to bury the fiber optics cable. The largest ship, Starting in South Africa was the Tyco Resolute. The ships used a dynamic positioning system to ensure the cable was laid exactly where it should be. Thousands of kilometers of cable was rolled out as the ships made their journey. Meanwhile, smaller branch cables were laid from the terminal stations on the coast, extending about three kilometers offshore. The large fiber deploying ships stopped to pick up the branch cables off the sea floor and connect them to the main cable. A grappling hook was used to pick up the branch cable and bring it on board. It was then brought into the ship's laboratory where engineers spliced it to the main cable. Now when you talk about splicing fiber optics, you're talking about an exact science. There can be no degradation in the signal when they're connecting these two pieces of glass, these two pieces of fiber optic. The fibers cannot even be a nanometer out of place. To do this on a moving vessel is impossible. So you have to keep the Tyco Resolute completely stationary while the engineers are doing the splicing work. The newly spliced cable was then carefully lowered into the sea by the crew. Once there was one continuous system that was integrated with the global fiber network, it was time for testing to ensure optimum configuration and traffic flow. And finally, switch on, which happened on July 23rd. Terrestrial networks have been rolled out in most of the countries connected, extending the fiber optics inland. It is hoped that the cable's arrival will signal lower broadband prices and open up untold opportunities in healthcare, education, business, governance and conservation.